just have my berries now. What do you know? What to do? So we've got this chap, uh, and we've got the high, we've got the high blood pressure one, and uh, he's got the history of all those things. And so we might just want to just do. A, so you could use your stethoscope method. Uh, I don't know which would come first. It depends on what you're most used to doing, or you could just go for palpation and observation. Observation is nice. So if you do an observation, what you might want to do is just um, expose the midriff and have a look. Has anybody ever seen uh, an aortic aneurysm? No. Yes. yes. What did it look like? Seen. Yes, yeah. seen. With my eyes or this body? With eyes. I you can, if it's very much, you yes. can see if it's moving. Yes, so, uh, strangely enough, Jeremy, who spoke first this morning, came to that course a few years ago, and he said, he put his hand up when I asked that question, he said, yes, I saw one. He said, uh, this guy came into my clinic, he'd got low back pain, and I'd gone through all the story and all the spiel that I normally do, and I got to the point where I was just doing his, his examination. We'd done some range of motion stuff, and he, yeah, yeah. And he says, I'm just going to lift your leg up, sir, just to check whether your sciatic nerve's okay. And he got to here, and he went, because when he got to there, he looked at the patient for the reaction, but he just glanced here, and he saw what he described as a little alien coming out of this gentleman's stomach, okay, which was the aneurysm. It was an advanced aneurysm. Uh, which he immediately put the leg down, <laughs> gave himself a moment to think, and then it, this guy was, he was in the hospital, so he was taken off to uh, the emergency room, and he had an operation in the afternoon. So he comes in with low back pain to the physiotherapy clinic, gets diagnosed with an aortic aneurysm there and then, sent to emergency room, operate on in the afternoon, okay? Could have been a different story, couldn't it, if, if, if we'd not been observing properly or thinking properly, okay? So first of all, look, can I see anything? Is there anything obvious? Does it look abnormal? Uh, here we can see a pulse, but the pulse is normal. It's the same pulse that you would get if you took a radial pulse. It's just to do, do, do. Uh, you can see it, most of you can't either. You can look, just a little bit of something <coughs> going here. Nothing serious. And then secondly, just go for a simple palpation. Uh, bear in mind, if you think there's a pathology there, you go in with nice soft hands and not pointy hands, because this is a sort of weak uh, vessel wall. So you don't want to go in like this, you know, that's not the way to go. We're going in with a nice sort of soft flat hand here. So the, the technique is generally with a flat hand, just come in where you think you might find the aorta, and I can feel straight away, can you feel that I'm on that? Yeah. The patient can usually you know, get the feedback of your pressure on the vessel, that's normal. However, not all our patients are so slim and fit like this, they're quite rotund, and you might have to actually almost fix the the, the abdominal contents and then come in from here and then just get that and you may or may not get it. This is a very easy area <coughs> to find. If I couldn't find it, we can bend the knees up, so I bend both knees up, just detention the sort of abdominals and the, the, uh, the musculature in there. And then if you still can't quite find it, I'm not, I'm not too worried now because I can't find it. Not being able to find it is, is, is no problem. It's, it's being able to find something that's a bit scary that is the problem, really. Excuse me. But if you're still struggling, we're going to take a deep breath in and then a deep, and then breathe out. So and then I just follow the breath, let the di diaphragm move out of the way, and then I should pick it up quite easily. And so you, well, I've been able to pick it up the whole time, but in, in, in a bigger patient, sometimes you have to search around. And if I'd still not found it after all that palaver, I'm probably fairly sure that it hasn't got an aneurysm, to be fair. If you do just lay your fingers on, though, at the beginning, and you just think, oh, what are you feeling for? Well, you're feeling for an abnormal pulse, actually. If you've never felt one, you won't know what it's like, but the description is a fluttery kind of pulse, so not the da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, it's a kind of pulse. And bizarrely enough, we did find one on one of our courses in England. We got, you're fine, by the way, don't worry. We got the patient on the table, and he was, you know, we, we, like you do, we just pick someone out of the audience, we go, oh, we're just going to do this. And I, I went like that, I went, all oh, right, yeah. You, yeah, you'd feel for a fluttery pulse and I had to sort of pretend I'd not found anything. And then we had to tell him at coffee time that in actual fact we found the fluttery pulse. Uh, and he went, oh, that's funny. And then he told us about this massive long vascular history that he got. And he said, oh, that's right. He said, I'm not too worried. He didn't feel too bad, did he? All these sorts of no, no, I think so. Um, anyway, he went to his GP and he, he had an ultrasound scan and he was found to be a, a four and a half centimetre diameter. Uh, aneurysm and he goes for a check every year. He's an osteopath in England, he goes for a check every year. So he, he thanks us for saving his life now. Yeah, yeah. only joking. Okay, so you may, you may or may not find one uh, as an incidental thing, okay?
okay so uh, and that's all there is to that really at the end of the day and if we found it we send the patient back to the GP the GP will do an ultrasound scan he'll try and work out what the diameter was if it's a dangerous one they'll send them for surgery if it's just a four or four and a half or even five they'll just send them for an annual scan now it doesn't mean I can't treat him though he could still come back and if we would found some proper bona fide musculoskeletal signs we could still treat but we might want to modify what we did so a bit like Roger was saying well okay what shall I do with this chap well probably I wouldn't want to do so I'm just using this as an example some of those sort of McKenzie extension type things it might be good for his back I don't know it might not but it certainly wouldn't be very good for his stretched and, and, and torsion day aorta okay we might not want to put him into full rotational torsion because we might be torsioning the aorta as well. Yeah, does that make sense? But there's loads of other things we could do quite safely, I'm sure. We could, you know, various manual therapies, acupuncture, you know, electrotherapies, etc., etc. So because we've got loads of tools in our armory as physical therapists, we should be able to find something that we can safely do, uh, use as a treat treatment method with, with this particular patient. Does that kind of make sense? So we're going very quickly. I understand, but are you happy with that so far? <clears throat> so two ends of the scale, the really dangerous one that needs to be sent out of your clinic immediately because they need a surgery, or the one that you're a bit worried about, you throw them off, they get monitored and then they come back to you because they've still got back pain and you think there is a component of musculoskeletal as well, in which case we modify our treatment methods, okay? So that's the first one. Um, Let's take you to the other end of the spectrum now. We'll just give you a couple of examples just to get your head around this. So that was an older age, atherosclerotic, um, classically atherosclerotic, profiled patient. Okay, so that's the first one. Mm -hmm. Let's take you back to something more realistic, perhaps, for you in your clinics here with all you fit people here in Norway. An 18-year-old footballer who complains that when he runs in the middle of the pitch, he's a midfield player, he runs backwards and forwards and on his toes and he's doing this and this. He gets some calf pain and his foot, feet go a bit tingly and his boots feel a bit tight. Okay? <laughs> Bilateral symptoms we've got, so okay, and we're thinking good. Palpating the pulse. Palpating pulse, yeah, so let's keep it simple. Put your shoes and socks off. <coughs> You're right with this, carry on. You're doing a good job. 